Amen. Amen. Yeah. We've been talking uh, off and on, so we didn't make this an official series. So I didn't get any nice uh, official series uh, graphics this time, because we, we've just been going through the Word, going week by week, and over and over again, again, it's been on this message of faith, of believing on God, and, and asking God, uh, and, and putting our full body, full faith, full being into all that He says, all that He's doing, all that He wants to do. And um, one of the things I was thinking about this week was the, the question of, uh, what happens, or what should we do when God asks us to do the impossible? Have any of you been in that kind of situation before where, you, where God asks you to do something, and you're like, well, that sounds, that sounds a little hard. That's a little difficult for me. That's a, as on a scale, you know, I, I have an issue with that. But, but Jesus, something that I've learned as I was studying again another miracle of Jesus, that Jesus loves to do the impossible. Amen. Amen. So the first, uh, the story that I want to open with is in, found in Mark chapter 3. And in Mark chapter 3, uh, Jesus is doing his business again. He's out healing people. And he, he comes to a man and uh, says to him something that would, in my mind, seem impossible. So we're going to look at uh, Matt, Mark chapter 3, and uh, we're going to see here a story of Jesus healing. Not only was it impossible for the man, but it was a big deal religiously too uh, at the time. But Mark chapter 3, this is what it says. Come on. Another time, Jesus went into the synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see what he would do. Jesus said to the man, or the shriveled hand, he said, stand up in front of everybody. I'm going to make, make this a little public. In verse 4, it says this, Then Jesus asked them, Which is lawful in the Sabbath to do? To do good or to do evil? To save life or to kill? But they were being silent. He looked around at, the, at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts. Jesus is trying to get them in a, in a pickle here. Either way, what they answered, the religious rules of that day would say it was a wrong thing to answer. Do evil, then nobody's supposed to do evil on the Sabbath, and then nobody's supposed to actually help people on the Sabbath because we're not supposed to work. But Jesus says to the man, here, stretch out your hand. Now I can imagine being in the shoes of a man with a shriveled hand. Now, for years, his hand had been shriveled. He hasn't been able to use it. This is what he's come to know life as, a life with a shriveled hand, right? This is, this is reality for him, day after day. And then he comes before Jesus, and Jesus asks him to simply to do the impossible. Then stretch out your hand. Wow, I could imagine being in that position. What, what am I going to do? Is, is something going to change this moment than every other moment that I wanted to grab that nice cold drink or any other moment that I wanted to put on my shoes or, or to tie things or to go about to, to write things to do what, what I've always wanted to do? It. And in that moment, uh, he has to uh, contemplate this thing. Am I going to be able to do the impossible? The very thing Jesus is asking me to do. So again, we see, if we continue to read, immediately after... He stretched it out, and his hand was completely restored. So immediately after God asked him to do the impossible, then we find that he's able to stretch out his hand and do the impossible. He's able to stretch out his hand, and his hand is completely restored to health. I think it's time for us in our faith walk, our walk with Jesus, to redefine what we think is impossible. Uh, so maybe there's some things in your life you say, oh, this would be impossible for me to accomplish in my life. Or God has called me to do something, and, and, and I struggle this side because I don't feel like I'm qualified for it. I don't feel like I have the gift set for it. I don't think uh, that I have the ability or the capacity to do it, or I don't have the time to do it. Sometimes I'm like, I don't even have the time to do it, God. It, it seems impossible. But, you know, I love our congregation here at Cal City Church because we represent uh, a, a whole grommet of diversity from different age groups to different backgrounds, different countries. And so I was thinking a little bit about uh, the kind of impossibilities that maybe we have seen in our lifetimes. And I was thinking about the impossibilities of what has happened with the computer uh, from the time of uh, the most senior person in the room to the youngest person in the room, how they interacted with computers. I was talking with one of my friends at work, Vish, and he was mentioning, uh, he's a programmer, and he does uh, programming for American Family. And so he was talking about computers, and we went about, yeah, it's really strange to think what a computer can do today. 
And they're like, yeah, you know, when our parents, both of our parents probably about the same age, you know, when our parents first uh, interacted with the computer, you know, it filled a room, you know, they had punch cards that they would go through in the program, they would have to, you know, feed it through. And I said, yeah, and now a computer for us, I mean, this thing here is our computer, our GPS, our uh, telecommunicator, we could, we could call people, we could send email, we could send text message, I could take pictures, I could take video, I could upload high definition video all across the globe, and I could I talk to somebody today who's sitting in Japan. I, I talked to, just a couple weeks ago, my friend that's sitting in Guangzhou, China. Thousands of miles away. I mean, to think about where everything started, I think, oh, that's I mean, it would be impossible that we could talk in an instant and have instant communication with somebody sitting across the globe, or I get to Skype with Denver, who's sitting in La Crosse, and it's really fun too. Uh, so, you know, there's, a, there's a, a different, at different stages in life, we find different things to be it, it, more, more or less impossible. Uh, I was talking with a friend this week again, we were talking about the likelihood of the Packers making the playoffs. <laughs> right now, it seems yeah. pretty impossible. I said, well, at least we're not Bears fans. I mean, that's not. I mean. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> One of my good friends, he just had surgery, and he was thinking about the impossibilities of being able to clap again. He said he had a shoulder, a shoulder surgery, and in his mind's eye, he's thinking about, man, will I ever be able to clap again? Will I ever be able to hunt again? He loves to hunt. He's from out in Montana, and he gets these huge deer. And that's amazing what he, he does. He's like, I don't even know. At this point, it's still, I still struggle with the reality of, hey, one day I'll be able to, to hunt again. One day I'll be able to clap again. I'll be able to enjoy life just as it is. And as I've surveyed scripture, there is, scripture is filled with things that seemingly are impossible that, again, God comes through. I think about Abraham and Sarah. Abraham and Sarah being old age, being barren, and they, 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 they're gonna, they uh, are going and following after God. Abraham's a faithful man, and God promises him that he'll be a father of many nations. And this was such a ridiculous thing, uh, such an impossibility in Sarah's mind that she even scoffed, she laughed at the idea that, hey, one day we, in our old age, will all of a sudden be able to father many nations. And that requires God that I would actually have a kid. I mean, that's like prerequisite for us to be fathers of many nations that we would have a kid. In their old age, they, they said, we're already old, how can this be? And then even, it got even, in my mind, more impossible for Abraham and Sarah because the promise didn't come to pass at that moment. Time passed. It was time passed. Of course, sometimes I could think, you guys could think it too. God says something to me, you're like, Andrew, this is gonna happen in your life, and then a week goes by and I get impatient, you guys have more patience than me, I guess. Okay, so you know, a year goes by, and I'm like, wow, I still haven't seen this. For Abraham and Sarah, at one point, it's 14 years. They haven't seen this promise. They've, they've given up, and they get a visitor. In, in Genesis, it's recorded in Genesis chapter 18, verse 14. And the visitor, he poses, poses this question to them. He asks them, is anything too difficult for God? And he says, in a year, I want to come back, and you're going to be with child. Is anything... With time going by, I mean, that, it's a difficult thing. 24 years, it's about 24 years by the time Abraham was promised, to the time Abraham, Abraham and Sarah have a child, it's taken a little time. Moses, being 80 years old, I'm still a young guy, I still call myself a baby around here, around the church. But we, I know we have some 80 year olds, part of Catholic City Church. At 80 years old, God visits, visits Moses in the bush and he tells Moses that he's going to go and he's going to deliver millions of uh, Israelites out of Egypt. And he has something that he finds impossible. I remember being young, I, and when I was in first and second grade, I used to go to speech therapy. You know, and God said, Andrew, you're going to be able to one day speak, or what I heard in my heart, he said, Andrew, you're going to be somebody that speaks to the nations. I said, but I still have to go, I still have to go to speech class. You know, I'm still learning how to say my name. You know, I went by Andy because I can't say Andrew correctly because the R still gets messed up in my, in my tongue. All right, Moses is saying he's 80 years old. One, he's, he's already, you know, he's, he's lived, lived a little bit. He, he's already, you know, done some things. He's, he's multiplied and, and, and had a life. And, and he visits with God and God all of a sudden says, hey, hey Moses, you're going to go before the most powerful person in the world. And you're going to declare that these people are going to be set free. What does Moses say? God, I can't talk to them. 
It's impossible. It wouldn't be impossible for me to stand before the most powerful man in the world and declare that he's going to let free my people, your people. That is impossible. We know that that journey continues. And Moses not only walks with God and he, and he sees God provide miracle after miracle, the people get fed free, then they're out in the wilderness. Another impossibility. Ever been in a desert before? I was a kid in Southern California. We went out to the desert. It was pretty hot in the desert. There wasn't a lot of water in the desert. Actually, me and a couple of my friends, we learned that we could fry an egg out in the sun because it was so hot in the desert. And he provides water out of a rock. Impossible. Impossible. This, this shouldn't happen. This, is, this defies logic. This defies, this defies everything. It, bread in the morning, they get food. Every morning, wake up, they have enough food. Gideon. Pastor mentioned the Gideon story a little while ago. Gideon hiding in a, a wine cellar, right? And, and, and an angel appears to him, calls him a mighty warrior. Then he, he gets an army. He's like, all right, God, God's tasked them with a, a, a task to go, to conquer the nation, to go and to win the battle. He says, all right, God, I've got the best equipped army. I have 32,000 people. I'm ready. But still, they way outnumbered. He was way outnumbered in this situation. God says, no, take the men down to the, to the river. See, see who drinks in what way. Who's going to lap the water down and just drink like a dog? Who's going to take it up and, and still survey the land? Odds against them. Impossible. Only 300 men drink the water the right way. God, really, 300, 300 qualified men were already way outnumbered, and God had run to go against this, this army, and, and God, it's, it's impossible. Again, come out victorious. The many times our, our self concept, our concept of ourselves, gets in the way of God's possibilities. Because I've got to remember that, it, as I mentioned before, we, we've got to factor in God in our faith. The many times we look at our own qualifications, Moses, I can't speak, Abraham, Sarah, hey, I'm, I'm old, I don't have children, and you're asking me to be the father of nations. Get in, hey, I'm, I'm a little scared actually right now. I, I really don't want to be out on the front lines. Hey, hey do you know who I am? I'm, I'm the introvert in the room. I don't like to do these things. And sometimes we factor that as greater than the faith that we have in the God who does the impossible thing. God is with us. Amen. That's right. See, it wasn't just that. It was continued stories. I mean, if you read this book, and I can't help but say, oh, there's faith. There's so much things that God can do. Hey, Daniel and the lion's den, I mean, come on, we're like, I could go downstairs and the kids would be really excited about these stories. I know you guys have probably heard these things a few times. But I mean, think about this, Daniel and the lion's den, he, he, Daniel it is going to be faithful to God no matter what, no matter what the decree is, I'm going to pray, gets himself uh, sent into a lion's den. Lions like to eat things. I don't know, I was a National Geographic guy. I like watching uh, the African safaris and seeing the cheetahs and the lions chase after things. And, and, and it's exciting. And Daniel is thrown in with these hungry lions. What is the result? <laughs> it's impossible. It's impossible. Getting ready to celebrate the Christmas season. God visits Virgin Mary by angel with the decree that she's going to be a child. The child that she's going to bear is going to be the savior of the world. The most glorious, wonderful, beautiful gift of all, right? That we could again have unity with God. All was going to come through an impossibility. And I love the angel's encouraging words. Let's turn here. Luke chapter 1. Interacting with Mary and Mary, first of all, the angel shows up. If an angel showed up and, and talked to me, I would be a little scared. The, the first introduction, we know the same the introduction of all the angels that come and say, Fear not. We get, and and uh, the, the angel begins to de declare to her and tells her of all the things that are to come. In verse 23, it says this When the time of the service was completed, uh, sorry, this is Zechariah, he returned home, and after this, he his wife, Elizabeth, became pregnant, and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said, and these days he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. Again, another old age receiving a child. 
26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel Gabriel to Nazareth, to a town of Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. You are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and his name will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary says, How will this be? since I am a virgin. And the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. Verse 37, the kicker, the, 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 grand, the, grand, the grandiest thing. 37, For no word from God will ever fail. 38. I am the Lord's servant, Mary said. May your word to me be fulfilled. And the angel left her. In, in Luke chapter 1, verse 37, the other translations will say, For God is with you, and with God nothing shall be impossible. Amen. Yeah. For God is with you, and nothing shall be impossible. God loves doing the impossible. Amen. See, to have great faith, Mary demonstrates this great faith, and for us, encouragement for us to have faith, great faith is this response that she says in verse 38. Mary answered, May your word be to me fulfilled. Let it be, or other tradition, let it be according to what you say. That's the invitation for us when God calls us to do the impossible. Those tasks that we think are beyond our reach, beyond our capacity, beyond what we think uh, we are able to do. Uh, Mary responds the exact same way that our invitation that we have to respond the same way. Uh, let it be so. Let it, let it be according to your be, Let it be exactly how you ask. When God asks the impossible of us, it's a lot. It is more than we can handle sometimes. Andrew, you're so smiling when you say that. But it, it is. It's more than we can handle. But the beautiful thing is when he asks of us the impossible, he comes through and we get to see the impossible become possible. And then our faith begins to build. Then when we read these scriptures, we see over and over and over again these stories of how God asks the impossible and the possible is accomplished by faith increases. And the next time I face something or the next time he asks me something, I think, wow, God, you did it before. I know you can do it again. He makes these things possible. He builds our faith. So when God asks us, or as a church, as we're asking, hey, can we start a new MC? Can I become an elder of the church? Can I become a board member of the church? Can I lead a ministry? Could I uh, lead a home group? Could I invite my neighbor into my house? Could I join the worship team or be a greeter? Could I do something extra for God this Christmas season by providing for Karen? Well, it's not asking these things, and immediately I have all these excuses or have all these reasons why I couldn't do those things. We must remember that God is with us. It's not... That we, in our own capability, when God asks us to do things, He doesn't ask us in our own capability. He asks us to put our abilities into His hand and it's for Him to make the impossible thing become possible. God loves to ask us to die daily, to pick up our cross, and follow Him. That seems impossible. I tell you, man, sometimes I, I get, myself comes out a little bit. Anybody else say yourself comes out, I'm like, yep, yeah, there it is again, right? But he says that though it's impossible to die daily, to pick up our Christ, to follow him, he says when we do, that that burden of carrying his cross is going to be light. He promises that the yoke that we're going to carry, the, the, the thing that he's asked us to do, that it's going to be easy. He promises if we believe him, we will see his glory. John 11, verse 40. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. So the glory of God, I, I like analog, this analogy of a man who likes to restore cars. When I was younger, we would visit Wisconsin and, and go visit my grandpa in Milwaukee, or Pewaukee area. But uh, he, he would restore cars. He had different Mustangs, or he would have different uh, old Ford trucks. 
you know, whenever you see uh, a car being restored, you know, they, they, t they strip it all down, right? And then they, they put hours of work stripping it. I mean, it's not something they do in an afternoon a job. Then, then they take time, right? You've got the paint job, you've got to put new leather in, you've got the engine work that you've got to do, you've got the special cars, you get it all clean, and then you get to go to the car shows. Anybody like going to car shows? I, I enjoy going. You know, every once in a while I go and they look at all these cars. I'm, I'm not a car guy in the sense that I know, you know, what like a 250 Chevy, Chevy whatever thing is, or I don't know like how many manifolds it has or anything like that, but I like looking at them. I'm like, wow, these are really awesome looking cars. And, or, or hearing the sound of an engine roaring, like I'm like, yes, I could, I could, I could do that. I could get involved with that. But, but the analogy, when we talk about uh, uh, glory, what, is, what, is, what does this sense of glory mean? When these, whether it be uh, somebody that restores cars or does board work or whatever the case may be, they say this car is their glory. It shows, it shows their workmanship, it shows their effort, it shows who they are. Their character is revealed and their diligence and their attention to detail is shown in what they do. The glory of God, if we believe, we will see the glory of God. We will see His character. We will see who He is. We will see the details of who God is by what comes about when we believe Him for the impossible. We typically respond, and God says, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. We typically respond by, God, show me your glory. Then I'll be able to do what, what you asked me to do. Show me how great you are. Like, God, God do this for me. We, we went over, over the story of, of um, Jesus multiplying the food, right? And, and they wanted, right afterwards, they wanted them, Jesus to show him another sign. He's like, Jesus, you showed our, our forefathers signs. You provided them bread and all these kind of things. Show, what's your sign to us? And I always laughed at that passage of Scripture because he had just healed all their sick. And they're still asking him for another sign. But, but I fall into this category too sometimes. God, remind me. God, God show me. God, I want to see who you are. I want to make sure that there's a guarantee that when I step out to do this impossible thing, that you're going to come through. But God's first question to us is if we would believe. Only those who have faith and believe will see his glory. Will see the outcome. Will see the, the impossible become possible. Only those who are willing to go forward in faith, obeying him in any way, they will get to see the miracles. Because at that time, the moment, the, the moment of faith, the moment of going forward and belief is when we go and step outside of ourselves. When Moses said, finally said, yes, God, I will go, I will speak. When, when Daniel, he said, you know what, no matter what he's going to say, I'm going to pray. No matter what's happening around me, I, I'm going to go and I'm going to do it, I'm going to be faithful. He begins to see the miracles. He begins to see God. He stepped out of himself and went into who God was. The God... This is the promise. But the God of the impossible will be asking the impossible from us. He will be asking us to go a step further. He will be asking us to go a step beyond who we think we are, who we think we're capable of. Outside of our capacity, more, there's a more reasonable person that you could ask God. But remember, with God, nothing is impossible. There's three truths I want to go over before we end today. Uh, uh, things that we can remind ourselves of when God asks us to the impossible. And all of a sudden, those questions come to mind. Those things about who I am and, and what I can do and my capacity and all these lists, right? I don't know who, who's a list person in here, but, but sometimes I like Rachel loves lists, right? Uh, it makes a list of, okay, God asked me to do this. Well, these are all the reasons why it can't be possible. Our responsibility is then in those moments to say, God, here's the truth about who you are. And it increases our faith to say, God, yes, I believe on, I will believe on this over these things that I see in my reality to see the impossible become possible in my life. The three truths that we're going to go over is first going to be found in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Romans 8, verse 28. And we know that in all things, God works for good for those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. I was, I was, sometimes I get really sinister in my note-taking, and I'm like, oh, should I say that? But 
like, uh, so the prayer, the prerequisite here is those who love them. So if you don't love them, warning to you, is that things may not work out. Okay. But anyway, uh, verse 20, for we know that all things work together for good for those who love him, who are being called according to his purposes. So when God calls me to do something, when God asks me to do the impossible, and I know that it's God that has done it, it's not Andrew's voice, it's not somebody else that's giving me obligation, that is a God-ordained thing for me to go, and when I was a little kid, I remember saying, God, you're going to call me to go speak to the nations. I mean, if, if it's God's purpose that has done these things, then it's going to work out. It's a truth that we remind ourselves in, in an impossible situation, when we're faced with difficulty, when God asks us to, to go beyond ourselves, I, I can rely on this truth, I've got to meditate on this truth, I've got to know it, I've got to have it deep inside of me, that how am I going to find faith, how am I going to go forward, how am I going to go, because I know that with God, all things are going to work out. And sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes with, with uh, Abraham and, and Sarah, man, it takes a few years. It, it's been a few times, a little while since I've heard the promise. It, 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 it's faced with the fact that, hey, I, I can't do this on my own. I can't speak. I, I have a speech impediment, God. Don't you know that? God, you're going to work it all together. God's going to work it all together. Let's have this truth deep inside of me to combat any lie of the enemy. We know this as a church, but it's a reminder that the enemy only speaks lies. The Bible says that that's his native tongue. So when he speaks to us these lies about who we are, we must again remind ourselves of the truth of who God is, that he is capable. Amen. And that he works all things together for those who are called according to his purposes. A second truth that we here would be reminded of is found in Isaiah chapter 41. Can you turn with me there? Or flip it on your phone. You guys can get there faster than me. I used to do speed trips when I was a kid. Call it a scripture. Psalms 145.3. Go. <laughs> Isaiah 41, chapter, uh, chapter 41, verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Do not fear. I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. He's with us. He doesn't ask us to do the things, the impossible things, in and of ourselves. I like the song we sang uh, today, that he's asking us to throw ourselves upon his grace. Uh, that means to throw ourselves upon who he is. And that God, all that I am, I know I can't measure up, I, I can't do it on my own, I, I don't have the ability, but God, I want to throw myself upon you because I know that you're able to do the impossible thing. When he asks us to do the impossible thing, he knows that we can't do it. He knows who we are. But our confidence must be in who he is. There's a, a, a street preacher, his name is Todd White, and he goes around and preaching the gospel and, and going to the street corners, and he goes and he prays over people that are limping, or uh, he gets words that, uh, from God about people's lives, and he goes and he prays for them, and he, he sees awesome miracle moments happen. And he wears this really neat shirt. If we're talking about shirts we should get as a church. Uh, he, he wears this shirt, and on the shirt it says, God, Godfidence. Godfidence. Instead of confidence, Godfidence. And I think as a church, as I was meditating on this truth about Isaiah 41, it, is that God, is, when He's inviting us to, the, to do the impossible, He's inviting us to have confidence in who He is. That He's with us no matter what. Don't be afraid. He, he's going to make it. He's going to come through. He, the impossible is going to become possible. We must have confidence in who He is. Our faith will increase. Because when He asks us to do it, it it's going to happen. Last truth. The first truth is that he works all things together. We have confidence in that. Secondly, he says, don't be afraid because I'm going to be with you. You're not going to do this alone. Andrew, don't worry about it. Don't worry about saying your R's. It's going to happen. I was in college, so I had a, 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 one professor for all four years different. I did preaching with them preaching with my major. So I said, God, if, if I'm going to be called to, to speak to the nations, or I'm going to be called to speak on a regular basis, 
my what degree should I get? I should get a degree in preaching or public speaking. And so uh, I had one professor as a freshman year, and then I came back in the junior year, and in between there, I, I hadn't interacted with him much. The first year, you know, we talk, freshman year, they get to know who you are, a small private college, you know, and, and so they pick up on my speech and kind of like, right, uh, during the first classes, we talk about it, we're like, cool, okay, cool. And then, like, the junior year, he, um, he has me in the class again, and he's like, Andrew, when you say certain words, like, notice different things. And so we, we all laughed and had a good time about it, but I, I relate a lot when I, whenever I read the stories of Moses. But the, the, the reminder is that God is with us, Isaiah 41, don't be afraid. In John chapter 14, verse 13, the last truth that we can meditate on and to have confidence in, to remind ourselves when the enemy comes to speak lies to us about who we are, that the impossibility thing is greater than the possible words that God speaks over us. John chapter 14, verse 13. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in his Son. Chapter 15, verse 7. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. We have a Heavenly Father who is confident, who is able, and desires to see these good things come about in our lives. I love the fact that God asks us to come to Him. He, he's not a God or a, a Father that's too busy. He, he's not a, a Father who's annoyed with us. He, he's not so holy that He doesn't allow uh, dirty things to come and, and to be close to Him. He, he doesn't want to keep everything so neat and so tidy that if we come in, we think that we're going to distract Him from what's going on around Him, that, that He's going to get annoyed. No, we have a Father in Heaven that loves to answer our prayers that loves for us to come to speak to Him, that loves to come and help us and to figure out exactly what we're going to do, to figure out exactly the, the direction that we need, to, to, to solve the problem, to, to, to be the big guns in the room. Mm -hmm. I had fun playing Legos the other day, building bigger guns than the other person. It was really fun. Some guns are bigger. They have bigger destruction matters. and Some people can only get hit once and they, they die, but other people get it twice and they don't die. So it's really fun. But I'm reminded that I'm thinking about this in John 14. We get to invite God, the big guns, in. I, when I was younger, I loved watching Dad being military. He would always be working out or, you know, do, he would do push-ups. I was always thought that was really amazing how big Dad's muscles got, you know, and he, did, he everybody else worked out. I think, man, Bobby works out. Yeah. 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 Bobby's done. <laughs> but, I mean, and you get it, and there, we're, we have the opportunity, John 14, the truth is that we have an opportunity to invite God into what we're doing, and that He wants to. He wants to, because He wants to be glorified. He wants to get the credit. He wants to get the credit for the impossible things becoming possible. Like, that's His business. That's the, what the whole book is about. It's God doing the impossible, God uniting things, God restoring things, God making things whole. And so this morning, if there's anything in our lives that we think is hopeless, we say, no, God is the one that works all things out. God is the one that's always with us. God is the one that loves to come and interact with the things that are on our heart. And that this morning is what I want to leave you with. That there is faith. Have faith. Looks like this is going to be our theme over and over again. I don't know when it will end. To have faith that God is able to do it. God can do it. And He's asking you to take part in it. So when God asks you to do something that's impossible, no, He's not asking you to do it. He's saying, I'm going to do this. Do you want to come with me? I want to do it. Can I do it through you? The impossible things that you face in your life are not impossible for the one that created the universe. The scripture says that all these things were written that we would believe. That we would believe in. Amen. Why don't we stand this morning? I want to invite us all to stand. 
I don't know where, where you're at today. Maybe he said, no, God just asked me to do something impossible. And I, don't, I, don't have, I don't have the time. I don't have the talents. I don't have the capacity. I, I think somebody else would be more qualified to do it. I don't know what excuse that did you give him to God. If I said, you know what? No, I, I want you. I want to do it through you. Or maybe you're faced with an impossible wall. And there's some difficult thing standing between you and, and what you think things should be like. And, and he said, you know what? I don't know how I want to get over this. And I said, you don't have to get over it. Invite me into it. Invite me into it. Uh, you, for the me, you, you love me, and I, I want to come through. I want to come through for you. And for that this morning, I want you to hear that from the Father. And I want to come through for you. I want to be there for you. I want to get it done. I, I want to get it in the mess. I love inviting Dad into things. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't get things unscrewed. I couldn't uh, untie anything. Man, Dad, could you come and muscle that for me? Yesterday, that was fun. <laughs> Denver got the can open. And inviting God into it. This morning, why don't we bow our heads and just meditate on that for a moment? God, you work all things together for our good. God, I thank you. I don't have the fear. Because you're with me. Because you strengthen me, God. You help me. You uphold me. God, I'm thankful that I can ask you anything. And God, you love to come through. to do the impossible, to go forward in you, to take steps of faith. Father, today we just say, God, well, we accept that. If that's you this morning, you say, yeah, God, I accept that. I accept that journey that you're calling me to. I just want you to say that to the Lord. Yeah, God, I accept that. Like Mary. Mary's, I'm just, I'm a virgin. I don't know how this is all going to work out. He's the Savior of the world, but let it be so. Let it be, just like you said, God, let it be true of my life. God asks us to do the impossible. He knows who we are. He's really inviting himself into our lives, and into our situations. Maybe you're here this morning and say, you know what, Andrew, I just need a little boost in my faith. And would you pray that God would increase my faith, increase my belief in His ability to come through. That's you this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Would you pray with God? Invite you to raise your hand and say yes. In front of me and in front of God, you're saying, God, God, yeah, I need some faith. I need my faith to increase. God, I need you in who I am. Yeah. I'm gonna pray and then I, I invite you to just respond this morning. It's got done a little early. I want to invite you to, to respond and say, God, yeah, come, come increase my faith. So this altar area is the time we can come before God and ask Him anything. He's not annoyed with us. He's not in a rush. That's right. He just wants to listen to us and to respond. So let me pray and then we can respond to Him. Father, I thank you this morning for your word. I thank you that your word gives life. God, it increases my faith. God, it gives me joy. God, it, it makes me excited because when I read about you, when I read about all these stories, Father, it shows me how great and how good and how glorious you are. Father, may each one in this room, God, there's ones that identified said, yes, I need a greater faith. Yes, I, I need my belief in you to be greater. And Father, Lord, we recognize this morning that in you there is endless possibilities. So Father, I pray for every individual today. Father, every family represented today. Father, Lord, that faith will arise. Father, Lord, that we would have that confidence. Father, that confidence in you and your abilities. That no matter what you may ask us, no matter what may, life may bring us, Father, Lord, you are with us. You are able and you are capable. You are leaning towards us. Father, with all your might, desiring, Father, Lord, that the impossible becomes possible. Yes. Father, we thank you for that this morning. I thank you, God, that you are with us. Father, as we respond to you, whether we come down and, and pray at the altar, or as we sit at our feet and continue to med 
to meditate on you. Father, I pray that that confidence in you, that faith, Father, would arise, and Father, would be solid ground that we can stand on. That no matter how many years, no matter what our incapabilities are, no matter what it is, Father, that we would know that you are able and that you desire to come through for us. Father, we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, I want to invite you.